morning everyone so if you've been following our previous vlogs you would have seen that we are still continuing our mini northland road trip and last night we came quite late here over from cape Rianga. we are now in hohora also known as pokanui village but yeah this is our airbnb unfortunately there was a power cut late last night as well in the area so we weren't able to show you around then but we have packed up we're ready for our next day of travels and i'll just give you a quick room tour shall i here it is <laughs> a super comfortable bed a nice comfy couch as well and the place is immaculate i really love clean places and so this was fantastic just like the other accommodations if you are interested in staying at any of these places we'll leave the details in the description below and for this airbnb we paid what was it peter 150 dollars a night that's pretty great value especially for that amazing view as well when you wake up to it three out of three amazing properties peter well done Jacqueline, the super nice Airbnb host here, also left us some ginger slices last night and she's got so many personal touches in the place that it was such a great stay. Wish we could have stayed a little bit longer. Today we're gonna go do a boulder walk, was it Peter? Yeah, we're gonna see the volcanic boulders. Yeah, <laughs> and also going to visit Tane Mahuta, which is the largest known living kauri tree. So that should be quite amazing to see because I think it's like a couple of thousand years old as well. Yeah. Anyways, should we head out? Let's head out. So we have arrived here at the wide area boulders. Not quite sure what to expect and we didn't realize that there's actually no one here. It's an honesty box system. So you either drop your cash in or you can do a bank transfer to the owners of the place. I think first we're going to check out maybe those, is it called Highland or Highlander cows? Highland cows. The ones with the cute hair. I've never seen one before in person. So I'd really like to see if All they right. have some here. Let's go check out the cows. Yeah, we'll <laughs> when you come out into the regions, you're going to find that there are some gems that you're not really going to be able to find in mainstream tourist sites. Mm -hmm. There are three different walks today. We've got the Boulder Loop, Lookout, or Magic Rock. Magic Rock's three hours, and the Boulder Loop is only one hour. I think we're going to go with the one hour one. Careful your footing, bud. Yeah. I've only got vans on, but I think it should be fine. Peter's in his jandals. <laughs> So these boulders were formed around 2.8 million years ago from a volcanic eruption and they rolled from the top of the hill down to the positions that they're currently lying in and they are massive. It's hard to explain the scale of how big they are here. Like big as a house. Yeah, some of them as big as a house. I'll try stand next to one so you can see. <laughs> This is definitely one of those things that's a hidden gem. Yen and I have been to quite a few things around New Zealand. I could definitely recommend this one. It's really beautiful. Right behind me, it actually looks like an enchanted forest. One of the reasons that New Zealand walks and forest walks are really nice is that you don't normally run into any kind of creepy crawlies like you do in some other countries, especially in Asia. So this was a very nice walk guys, especially if you like nature and visiting New Zealand forests. It's very pretty, it was really quiet too, which is awesome. Yeah, where are we headed to next? We're heading to the harbour to get some fish and chips. Hokianga Harbour, here yeah. you come. 40 minutes later and we have arrived in Hokianga Harbour Yay. from the Boulder Walk. So if you're traveling up north and you do want to visit Hokianga, there is another ferry terminal that you can catch at Kohuko, which is a historic village, which takes you all the way here and you can save like 40 minutes on your round trip as well instead of driving the highway. Yeah, and it's and only about $20. Yeah, $20. For a 15 minute trip. I've got to do a massive shout out to Raiha Marsden who recommended that we visit Hokianga. I've never been here, Yen's never been here. Yeah. Usually we go down the the east coast but this time we're going down to the west coast to get back to Auckland yep. but we're stopping in Rawani for an important thing fish and, a fish and chips store <laughs> that we got to try out so let's go take a walk around the town area and head over to that store now so we're here now at Hokianga takeaway to get some fish and chips and also Ikamata made here by Monty and Nina <laughs> yeah so this is Monty's shop. It's not actually my shop. Oh, is it not? I'm from Wellington. I'm a beekeeper. Normally. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But um, 
it's my mum's shop and she's a little bit sick at the moment it's and I've come up for winter yeah. just, just to help her out. The raw fish is normally scooped up by the locals before 2pm because <laughs> everyone around here loves it. Um, but a lot of tourists order the, the hookyanga flounder that we get from the fisherman who you see right down the road, he looks like a pirate. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. This is my absolute favourite thing to eat when we were back in Rarotonga. Ikamata. Raw fish. It's basically raw fish with coconut milk, onion, squeeze of lemon. Mm. <laughs> Does it bring back memories? It brings back so many good memories of Rarotonga. The fish is like just perfectly tender and then you've got the lovely zest from the lemon but then also the tones from the spring onions and the onions as well and it's all wrapped up in a nice coconut milk. Beautiful dish, made perfectly. Thank you, Monty. <laughs> Thank you, Monty. This is hitting the spot. Got my classic fish and chips. Yeah, if you're yeah. visiting New Zealand, this is something that you definitely need to have and try one of the chippies. Oh, hot. Oh, you're just hungry. And gotta have some tomato sauce as well. Cheers. Okay. Oh man, okay. that is a delicious fish and chips. Thank you, Nina, for cooking this. I can't imagine how amazing the flounder must have been then because this one was really delicious. So Monty is going to show us out back to a place where he saw killer whales last time. We've never seen a killer whale before, so that would be amazing. He says that they they catch, no, they chase stingrays. Yeah, they chase stingrays up the up the whole <laughs> harbour, and then yeah, they hunt them. And this is not a bad uh, work view, eh? Yeah. Monty? yeah. <laughs> That's where we have our smokos, our wrist breaks. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was super cool. It was very nice to meet Monty and Nina and getting to see that outback area of the harbour there. Fortunately, didn't get to see a killer whale, but that's okay. Next up, we are headed over to. Oppenoni, I think it is, for our accommodation. So we've just arrived at our final accommodation for this road trip before we head back to Auckland. We are going to visit the Kauri Forest tomorrow, but for tonight we're staying at Oppenoni Hotel. And it's one of those kind of like classic Kiwi accommodations. Bar slash hotel kind of a place with a small room. I'm gonna show you guys around. It's gonna be a quick tour though. Okay, and this is pretty much it. As you can see, there's yeah. pretty small accommodation, just a bed and a bathroom. And it is reflected in the price as well because this place was only $90, which is the cheapest of all of the accommodations that we've stayed at. everyone today is the final day of our mini road trip around Northland we hope you've enjoyed following our journey with us so far we are headed back to Auckland but before we do we are going to be visiting the Waipoa forest to go see Tane Mahuta the largest kauri tree You definitely have to clean when you arrive at a coldy forest. Yeah, always scrub and then do some effect. Very short walk, like just, what, maybe two minutes? Yeah, two minutes. <laughs> We've reached Tane Mahuta also known as Lord of the Forest. This kauri tree is gigantic. I don't know if it's gonna come out on camera to show the scale of it, but it is huge. The largest kauri tree in New Zealand, maybe the world, I guess, since kauri trees are native to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, and it's about 2,000 years old. I remember back in primary school, there was a kid who came at the show and tell and said, Oh, when our family went up north, we saw the gigantic kauri trees, the biggest one in New Zealand, and I was like, I wanna see that. And I've been jelly ever since I was in <laughs> primary school, and finally, I've seen Tane Mahuta. It's taken too long to go see it. Way huh? too long. So we're just chatting to Vanessa, who works here, looking after the forest. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa mentioned something super interesting. So inside the crown, Kauris are kind of like a host for other parasitic plants. So there's even a totara in there that's a couple of hundred years old. Just to name a few of those amazing plants, there are the grasses, the ferns, 
The beautiful flowers when they bloom with the orchids also up in there, including the mosses, fungi, and lichens. With a couple of native trees I could remember for all that was shared, uh, one of those being a beautiful white rata we've seen bloom up in that crown, and a small tortilla tree that ages around about 100 years old. You've got one right geek. It's part of that. <laughs> One's not bad. <laughs> You've got one out of a <laughs> Thank you, no. Vanessa. Thanks, Vanessa. You're very welcome. And about a minute's drive away, we are here to visit the second largest kauri tree, Te Matua Nahere. This one is apparently around about 3,000 years old, Vanessa was saying. 15 minutes walk down this magical way. There it is, guys, Te Matua Nahere, right behind us. Also known as Father of the Forest. This is going to be the last stop of the day before we take our long drive back to Auckland. <laughs> Hope you've all enjoyed coming along with us for this road trip. If you love nature and walks and that sort of thing and you're visiting New Zealand, even if you live in New Zealand and you haven't seen this before, check out the West Coast. Yeah, it's beautiful here. If you guys have enjoyed these episodes, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Drop us a comment, we really love hearing from you all. And I guess we'll catch you next time. See you all. <laughs> Bye. This is a classic Kiwi roadblock right here. We got a bunch of cows crossing the road with some herders. Normally there's some dogs out here, but you know, we got some human herders. Oh, they finally got them through the gate. All right, we might be going soon.